Hello everyone, my name is Moyo and you're so welcome to SheBite. I make videos all about food, faith and lifestyle and I'm sure I have a wealth of videos for you to check out if you have not already. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make chapati. Chapati is an Indian flatbread um, that because of the Indian influence on Kenya has also become a huge part of Kenyan culture so it's also eaten widely in East Africa. It's usually made with chapati atta flour which is like a really finely ground wholemeal flour but I didn't have that today so I'm using white flour. If you'd like to see how I make my chapati then keep on watching. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. So let us start with our dry ingredients. First, we're just going to be putting in flour. I'm putting in about 200 grams of flour, about two to three grams of salt, and about one gram of black pepper. You can also add other spices like thyme, um, paprika, curry, rosemary, whatever gives your heart joy. You can add to this on flatbread. And then I'm going to be adding in some lukewarm water. I do not measure my water when I'm making flatbread, if I'm going to be honest with you. But just for reference purposes, I added about 120 to 150 ml of lukewarm water. Then you're basically going to mix everything together until you have a smooth and soft yet not sticky dough. At this point, you can see that my dough is still too dry, so I'm going to add a little bit more water and mix everything together. Your dough should be wet enough such that you're able to remove all the excess flour from the sides of the bowl. I'm really happy that this happened in this case because I've actually added a bit too much water and I'm just going to show you how to troubleshoot this. If you have um, too much flour, you can just add extra water in drops. But if you have too much water, as you can see as I have here, the dough is a bit too sticky and therefore I'll not be able to knead it um, easily. So I'm just going to add a little bit more flour to the dough and then incorporate this and basically until I have the texture that I desire, which is a really smooth and easy to work with yet not sticky dough as you can see i've added the extra flour and the dough is now a lot more easy to work with it's still a bit sticky but i'm not going to add any extra flour at this point because if your dough is a bit sticky by the time you finish kneading it is going to be nice and smooth as you want it but if you have it's right at the consistency that you want it might end up being a bit too stiff so at this point i'm just going to knead it for five minutes Five minutes might seem like a long time when you're kneading a flatbread, but trust me, the difference between kneading it for two minutes and kneading it for five minutes is actually really large in this sense. When you knead it for longer, you have a much more smooth dough. So after kneading for five minutes, you're just going to roll it up into a bowl and then cover it and leave it to rest for about 30 minutes. The resting process is very important because it ensures that your dough is no longer springy. After it has rested for 30 minutes, you're not going to knead it at all. You're just going to basically press it out into a log and then cut it into six pieces. If you want them bigger, you can cut into a few amount of pieces. If you want them smaller, be my guess, cut them into eight or even ten pieces. But I think this um, gives a good size for the chapati. It makes nice and large chapatis. Then you're just going to roll them nicely into small balls and then we're going to start the first rolling process. In chapati, you roll the dough out twice. The first one is to incorporate um, layers into the dough and the second time is just to make it into your desired shape. So the first time, you don't have to be too um, specific about making your dough round. You just need to make it nice and thin. Um, so as you can see here, I'm using my Shibite um, rolling pin that my cousin gave to me. Thank you so much. Um, it's really cute and it makes an imprint on the dough that you're rolling out. I'm actually using this rolling pin today because I have a bigger rolling pin that you would have seen from my cinnamon roll recipe. But when you're making fat bread, working with smaller rolling pins is actually much, much easier than working with big rolling pins because you want to use one hand to turn the dough and one hand to roll. I just put a few drops of olive oil on this dough. You can also use melted butter or ghee. And then I'm just going to roll it upon itself, kind of like a cinnamon roll. Um, yeah. So you're just going to roll it down upon itself and then you're going to curl it into itself to form like kind of like a snail shell yeah that's what it looks like at the end of the day press it press the loose end underneath and then leave it covered to rest while we do the other ones so i'm going to be showing you three ways to roll chapati there's numerous numerous ways but for me these are the three ways i usually use when i'm doing my chapati depending on how i'm feeling 
The next one is to fold it like a fan. I don't know about you, but in primary school we used to make paper fans all the time and this is the way that we used to fold them. So you're just going to fold it upon itself and then curl it around. And then you're also just going to leave this one to rest. Now the third and final method, you're going to basically do the same thing again, rub your olive oil and then you're going to cut along the radius of the circle yes radius if you don't remember your primary school and secondary school math this is a good reminder so cut along the radius of the bread and then just roll it around upon itself for the whole length of the circle and then you're just going to press this down upon itself one more time and then leave it to rest Basically, when I have a bit more time and a bit more energy, I tend to do the fan method. When I'm feeling more lazy, I just do the rolling method. And when I'm kind of in between, I do the radius method. So after this, you can then roll out your dough into a circular shape. What is really important in chapati, according to my Indian and Kenyan friends, is ensuring that the dough is super thin. I committed a complete sacrilege abomination when I uploaded a chapati recipe with a thick chapati. So make sure that you roll out your chapati until it's nice and thin turning it like i'm doing with one hand and rolling with the other hand helps to make it into a circular nature next we're going to we have all our chapati ready here one thing that you should not do which i did is do not layer your chapati one upon the other like this i always do this to save space and it always ends horribly just space them out nicely with nice nice um, amounts of flour in between each one here we're using the bottom of our pan which I just put a bit of melted butter on top and then you're going to put your chapati on top and then put some butter on top of that. After about 2 minutes when it's nicely cooked you can turn it over to cook the other side. I'm using the bottom of my pan because if I use the inside of my pan which is a bit too small for the size of chapati that I'm making, the chapati is going to fold on top of itself which I really do not want. If you have a tower which is a flat pan or if you have a really big frying pan then you can just use it in the normal way that it is used otherwise it's a really nice tip to ensure that your chapati cooks nicely and doesn't fold upon itself i think just watching the bubbles form in flat bread is just such a magical process and that's how you know that all your rolling and folding was a success because you've been able to form those air pockets and layers within the chapati that are super important and super delicious after about four minutes on for each one, all your chapati should be ready, like I have mine here. It is a super easy, super delicious recipe. You can eat it with stews, with beans, with curries, for breakfast, for midday snacks. And I really hope you try out this recipe in your own kitchen. Comment down below what you think and let me know if you try out this recipe. Thank you so much, guys, and see you in my next video. Bye!